are dragons real or are they mythical? And if they are mythical creatures, then why does the Bible mention them? What's up, everybody? Today we have a, an interesting question from one of our brothers on our SFP community. And by the way, for those of you guys who are not yet SFP community members, you guys can become SFP community members. Go to sfpswordsmith.com. Once you guys get there, if you guys are already members, you guys can log in or you guys can sign up as a free a regular member and join the community or you guys can sign up as a paid uh, subscriber monthly subscriber in order uh, for you to support this ministry um, you guys can do that you guys can sign up as a swordsmith and unlock the swordsmith courses that we are going to going to begin to do there at sfpswordsmith.com or our sfp community um, today we have a question from um, our brother lore he said hi I'm just wondering how come dragons are spoken of in the Bible. I thought that dragons were mythical creatures of paganism, yet in verses such as Revelation 12 verse 3, a dragon is referenced. That's what we're going to be talking about today in today's School for Prophets um, questions being answered. I don't know what to call this segment yet. Please help me. Uh, Help me with this segment. Help me to know what to call this segment because I don't know what to call it yet. What's up, everybody? Welcome to class. This is where we investigate, prove, and observe, and we test every doctrine with the truth of God's word. My name is Tilla. You guys can follow me on all social media. Links are in the description box below. Special shout out and a thank you to everybody who's been supporting this ministry. For those of you guys who want to support this ministry, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. Link is in the description box below via PayPal. Again, the link is in the description box below. If you guys want to donate a different way, you guys can purchase one of these, Revelation verse by verse. If you guys are having trouble with the book of Revelation, you guys can purchase this. This goes through the book of Revelation verse by verse. You guys can buy it for yourselves or buy it for, you know, as a gift to someone else. Links for these are in the description box below. If you guys want to support another way, you guys can do so by purchasing some hats and some t-shirts that we sell at sfpmerch.shop. Link is also in the description box. All these things do help us keep this ministry afloat. So thank you guys for the support and for the donations. Now, are dragons, the, the dragons that are being spoken of in the Bible, are they mythical creatures or not? Now, we can go to, we can go to, um, we can unsheath our sword we can unsheath our sword and we can go to Revelation 12 let's go to Revelation 12 real quick it says in Revelation 12 verse 3 and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head and his Tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which were uh, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So this dragon, there's this dragon here with seven heads and ten horns. Now, of course, we're not looking for a literal dragon with seven heads and ten horns because we don't see that regularly. Right. So this is just symbolic here. Um, by the way, if you go to uh, Revelation 1, verse 1, look what it says. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it. That means he made it symbolic. That's, the, that's what the word signified means. He made this thing symbolic, the, the book of Revelation. He says, he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. So the book of Revelation is heavily signified symbolic the book of revelation was written thematically and symbol symbolically so if we go back to revelation 12 and verse 3 the dragon there with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns uh seven crowns upon his head that's not literal right that's just symbolic that's not literal um but this actually came now, now a lot of people think that this is you know uh, dragons are mythical creatures that they're not real um, but I believe that they 
are real. I just don't believe that there are se uh, dragons with seven heads and ten horns. I don't believe that. I do believe that there are dragons, uh, but they're not dragons with seven heads and ten horns. Now, for those of you guys who are into science, you guys know about dinosaurs. But before the word dinosaur came about, before they called it dinosaurs, they actually called it dragons. They called them dragons. So back then, dragons were dinosaurs. We know that dinosaurs were real. They are not millions of years old. They are actually, um, you know, they, they are not millions of years old. They, they, they are just 6,000 years old, not millions, not millions of years. Um, so dinosaurs uh, were dragons back then. But, but after, we in, or after they invented the word dinosaur, then they started calling it dinosaur. Look what it says here in Revelation 12 and verse 9. Look what it says. And the great dragon was cast out, that dragon, right? The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, okay? The old serpent says, the old serpent called the devil and Satan. Now remember, um, that old serpent, that, what's that a reference to? That is a reference to Genesis Three, Genesis 3. In Genesis 3, we see a serpent there. Look what it says. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So the serpent was made. The serpent is, a lot of people think the serpent is just the snake or whatever, but serpents back then were actually dragons. Like, like it says in Revelation 12, the, the devil is the dragon, that old serpent, Right? So serpents back then were actually dragons. We can also see that in Job, there is another dragon called Leviathan. Now, Leviathan, a lot of people suspect that Leviathan was a dinosaur. But Leviathan back then, because, uh, because of the, you know, their English, the, I mean, not the English, but their old language back then, um, the Hebrew or whatever, th they didn't call it dinosaur because, again, the word dinosaur was not existing back then. So they would call it dragon, right? Or Leviathan. Okay. So, yeah. So, th so there were dragons back then. It's dragons and serpents, they're not mythical creatures. What's mythical about them is if you add on to these things, like, you know, seven heads, ten horns, all these things. Um, that, I don't believe God would make um, dragons with seven heads, and ten horns, because then you would be more than double-minded, and God is not double-minded. If he, if He's going to make creatures and things like that, He's going to make creatures that um, represent Him, and He's not going to make creatures with seven heads and ten horns or five heads or whatever. Because then that would mean they they are more than double-minded. And if God created a creature back then before sin that have more than one head then they would be more than double-minded. They would have different minds and uh, they would be, you know, contradicting each other. And back then, there was no contradiction before sin. Nobody contradicted each other. So God would not make that type of creature. Okay? But there were dragons back then. Today, we call it dinosaurs. They were not mythical. The only thing that is mythical about dragons is when people add on to it, like um, that they have magic or, you know, all kinds of sorcery. They have seven heads and blah, blah, blah. When God, uh, when God made or declared this vision um, in Revelation uh, 12 to John, the, the dragon is actually uh, a pretty widely known creature back then and that's why they have knights that you know that would fight dragons back then and they you know the knights would be the hero of the story um the ones who killed the dragon yeah so those are that mythical story but god used the symbolism of the dragon to aid john and the readers so that they would know what god is talking about but there were dragons back then literal dragons but they there weren't any literal seven-headed dragon that's just a symbol from revelation 12. i hope i answered that properly i just want to take this time now to thank everybody who's been supporting this ministry via paypal i want to thank um oh man i don't know how to say this name crescens crescencio i want to thank malcolm 
Pedro and Romana, R Ramona for the uh, donations via PayPal. Thank you guys a lot. It does help this ministry um, and keep this ministry afloat. For those of you guys who want to support this ministry, you guys can do so by, again, praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. Link is in the description box. You guys can donate via PayPal there. Um, if you guys want to donate a different way, you guys can do so by purchasing one of these, Revelation verse by verse. If you guys are having trouble with the book of Revelation, this goes through the book of Revelation verse by verse and breaks it down. Links for these are also in the description box. Or you guys can also purchase one of these. SFP hats um, and other SFP merch, some t-shirts and things like that. Links for these are also in the description box below, sfpmerch.shop. Okay, so thank you guys for all the donations and the support. It does help us keep this ministry afloat. So I hope I answered this uh, question properly and I hope that I answered it to your satisfaction, Brother Lore. Um, for those of you guys who want to ask your question, again, go to sfpswordsmith.com. You guys can sign up as a member there. Sign up as a free member or as a paid member to support the ministry. And you guys can be swordsmiths and unlock the swordsmith courses there. Once you guys get there, you guys can go down to questions and you guys can ask your question here. Um, and I will try to answer them either on the uh, on our community itself or through a video via video so thank you guys again praise god always see you guys on the next one peace and avocado grease Bye. the mark of the beast what is it all about now, this subject is probably one of the most debated when it comes to end time events is it a microchip or a tattoo that people are forced to wear in their foreheads or right hand. It's much like hunting for an animal's footprint. How would you know what footprint we're looking for if we do not specify which animal it is from? It is the beast's mark. They will also have the name of the beast and the number of his name. And what number is that? That number is 666. Now it's time for us to really dig deep and figure out what is the papacy's mark of authority.